Welcome to Raising the Bar. I am Ashley Vargas, and I help lifters feel more confident adding weight to their barbell. Hello, lifters, and welcome to episode number 13 of Raising the Bar. On today's episode, we are going to dive into one of my favorite topics to talk about, which is programming theory. If you've had conversations with me before about training or programming, you know that I can nerd out on this topic for hours. Um, I will not keep you on for hours. However, just know that I could if I wanted to. Um, So over the years, as both a lifter and a coach, I have tried, implemented, created several different programming methods. And over the years, what I've always come back to um, in order to build strength and increase performance is the conjugate method, um, also known as the West Side Barbell Method. Louis Simmons was the creator of the conjugate West Side Barbell Method. Um, and it was so sad to hear a couple months back, he uh, just recently passed away. But um, prior to that, uh, owner of West Side Barbell, which is an elite powerlifting gym in Columbus, Ohio, um, I have been there twice. And it is, it, if you were a powerlifter, you just have to go there at some point. It is incredible. Um, not just the facility, which is it, honestly, it's exactly what you would expect from a powerlifting gym as far as like the setup and the the way that the weights look and the equipment that's used. It's it's had a lot of love, but just the energy in that place is absolutely incredible. Um, but Louis Simmons, I believe he started competing when he was in his early 20s um, and at the age of 50 um, completed a 920 pound squat, which is just insane. Um, 600 pound bench press, 722 pound deadlift at the age of 50. I mean, that's incredible. Um, he's also coached like countless legend, legendary power lifters over the years. Um, definitely one of the best because his training protocol has proven itself time and time again and cranked out numerous elite level strength athletes. Naturally I've adopted it into my own training program. So I've put a little bit of spin on it, um, added my own flair. However, the principles are exactly the same. So with conjugate method, the principle is essentially 80, 20. So you do 20% barbell work and 80% everything else. And that 80% everything else is going to focus on drills that are specific to the lifter to help them push past any limitations that are holding them back from max performance. Overall, I feel like this is where lifters often fail. Um, And it's more so newer lifters or uh, lifters that don't have any guidance. They think that in order to get better at squatting, they need to squat more often. In order to get better at deadlifting, they need to deadlift more often. And that is absolutely not the case. What lifters need to do is evaluate those lifts, uh, break down your squat, see where your mobility issues are, see where your strength limitations are. Are you not incorporating your incorporating your hamstrings in the squat? Are you losing tension in your core? Like really dive in and analyze your particular lift and identify those issues that are really holding you back and take a training block and work on those specific things. If you continue to squat with those limitations, your squat is never going to improve because you're only going to be as strong as the weakest part of your body. So if you continue to train those compound movements with those weak areas, you're never going to improve. Now taking that same concept and applying it through the conjugate method, you are going to be repeating the same movement patterns just in slightly different ways. So it involves doing variations of the squat bench and the deadlift. And those variations are then paired with accessory movements that are geared towards highlighting, improving upon your weak areas, as well as addressing any type of mobility issues or previous injuries. So the training is going to consist of maximum effort and dynamic effort sessions um, for both the upper upper body and the lower body. And you're going to continually change up these variations on the main lifts and pair them with appropriate accessories, which is going to prevent you from plateauing over time. So let's dive into the actual programming piece of it a little bit deeper. So like I said, there's going to be two max effort days and two dynamic days. So each week, as you have the two max efforts, These workouts are going to use maximum load and resistance to build a high threshold for those fast twitch muscle fibers. So to do a max effort workout, you're going to begin with one of your main lifts or a variation of your main lift. So either your squat bench press or your deadlift or the variation of one of those three. 
And that's going to take up, like I said, about 20% of your workout. So remember with the conjugate method, it's not all about the barbell work. The barbell work is only 20% of that. And then the 80% is going to be that everything else. So the remainder of the training session is going to consist of all of those accessory, um, training movements that are going to be done for volume. So super high reps on these. So these exercises are going to support the muscles that you used in the main lift, of course. So if you're doing a bench, um, or if it's a bench day, you're going to be focusing on like chest, shoulder, tricep, and back. So the goal with the max effort days is to reach a right around three rep max um, and making sure that you're able to do these lifts without a spotter and using proper form. So keeping in mind, of course, that accessory training is going to depend on the individual's needs. So every lifter is going to be different. Every lifter's weak areas is going to be different. So these moves will help you to improve your overall strength and become more proficient in those weaker areas of your lifts. So for our upper body max day, for example, some of those accessory movements may include uh, chest supported T-bar rows. You can do tricep accessories, um, skull crushers, overhead extensions, uh, bicep curls, lat pull downs. Again, those are going to be specific to the lifter, but all of those you want to do for volume, if not to failure. For a squat day, some of those um, accessory movements may include reverse hypers. Um, if you have listened to, this is just a side note, by the way, if you have listened to any of Louis Simmons like, podcasts that he's been on, interviews that he's done, articles that he's written, I think in every single one I've ever heard or read, he has said reverse hyper at least a dozen times. <laughs> so this is something that every lifter should clearly be doing because he always emphasizes this movement consistently. So highly recommend if you haven't added a reverse hyper into your training program, do so now. So anyway, back to the max effort squat. So with the reverse hypers, um, I also like to incorporate a lot of core work on squat days. So, um, banded dead bugs, barbell rollouts, um, bird dogs, those types of things, core stability movements, uh, banded pull throughs is also a really good one. Also incorporating a lot of hamstring work. So glute ham raises, standing hamstring curls, single leg RDLs. Those are all things that I would also add in on a squat day as far as accessories go. So in addition to the two max effort days, you're also going to have two dynamic effort days. And those dynamic effort sessions are going to help you build explosive power. So you're going to be using um, maximum force at some max weight. So you're going to be lifting significantly less than you were on those max effort days. But um, each session, you're going to raise that percentage of weight that you're lifting. Um, five to 10% is the range. If you are a newer lifter, I would stay closer to 5%. You're a little bit more advanced, you can push it up to that eight to 10%. Um, but the focus is to move the weight as quickly as possible while still maintaining good form. So I mentioned in the beginning that the conjugate method puts a big focus on utilizing barbell variations and not just the barbell movement itself. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what some of those barbell variations are. The most common one um, is going to be a, a banded movement. So placing a band on either side of the barbell, and this can be for any of your three compounds. So your squat, your bench, or your deadlift. For your squat and your bench, for example, as you're going into the descent of the lift, you are reducing the amount of tension that the band is creating, right? Because the band is getting closer to its anchor point as the bar is descending. And then as you go into the ascension of the movement, so pushing the bar back to the top, you are creating more tension on the band because it's moving further away from its anchor point. Now, in order to get the benefits of this, you don't have to use a super heavy resistant band. I actually don't recommend that at all. Um, going a lighter resistance is going to be better, but this is going to help the lifter generate power and force within the press or within the ascension of the squat in order to push through sticking points specifically. The second barbell variation that is very commonly seen when using the conjugate method is adding um, chains to your bar. So unlike using a resistance band, the chains are going to add weight and not resistance. However, the weight is going to change depending on where you are in the movement. So in a squat, for example, starting at the top, your bar is going to be the heaviest. As you start to descend into the squat and the chains start to coil on the floor, you're going to get less weight on the actual bar as you go into the hole of the squat. Now, when we think about generating power, 
um, which is what you're doing when you are working against the resistance of the band, when you're working against the continuously added weight of the chain, you're actually developing more force and strength overall versus power. Keep in mind when we're talking about these barbell variations, they are not always going to apply to everybody. However, the two that we talked about today with the um, banded variation and the chain variation, those are going to apply to most lifters. And I have the majority of my competitive athletes train one, if not both of those. Um, so if you have not tried them before, I highly recommend trying them. Um, and as always, as we come to a close, I'm going to leave you with a couple major takeaways. The first one is you are only as strong as the weakest part of your body or the weakest part of your lift. So it is key for you to identify what those weak points are and train those in order to get better at your barbell lifts. The second one, you will not get better at barbell lifts by only training your barbell lifts. You have to include those accessories. You have to include your max effort days. You have to include your dynamic effort days in order to see true improvement. And again, this method has been proven time and time again. So I highly recommend adopting portions, if not all of this method. The third takeaway from this episode today is going to be the importance of adding variations to your barbell lifts. Um, doing the same movement patterns in different ways is what's going to keep you from plateauing because you're always going to keep your body guessing and you're always going to be training your sticking points, training your power, training your force, and just allowing you to become a more proficient lifter overall. So if you have a powerlifting meet coming up and you need meet prep services, or you are a lifter who just needs some help with programming and needs some direct I am going to provide a link to schedule a complimentary consultation in the notes of this podcast. Um, click on it, set a time that works best for you, and I would be happy to help. Otherwise, if you found value in this episode today, please subscribe and share with your fellow lifters, and I will see you on next week's episode. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you found value in this, please make sure that you subscribe and share on all of your social media platforms. And if you are a lifter who has been following a pre-written workout program and you're loving it, but you're just not sure if you are doing these movements correctly, I am now offering lift reviews where I will identify mobility limitations, form issues, and provide you with corrective drills for any lift of your choice to ensure that you're lifting as efficiently and safely safely as possible and you feel more confident than ever adding weight to that barbell. I have provided the link to schedule your lift review in the notes of this podcast. Make sure to click on it and pick a time that works best for you. And I look forward to talking with you next Wednesday.